Troy Galloway is a construction manager and consultant, commercial and residential builder, and a certified inspector for all commercial and residential buildings. And now, here is About the House with Troy Galloway. Well, hello, folks. Thank you for joining us today on a fun, fun show. I've been looking forward to doing this one for a long time, and uh, we've been getting a lot of requests. Of course, everybody loves construction fails, and that's what this is. I have compiled just a handful of some different things that we have found, some craziness, some dangerous things, uh, and some fun things uh, to the, and I just kind of put it all together here, and we're going to kind of walk through each one of them, talk about a little bit of it, have a little bit of fun, and you're going to really greatly enjoy it. Everybody, like I said, everybody just loves these fun ones like this, uh, construction fails. So what I did is I broke it down into some different uh, segments, and so we're going to start with crazy plumbing <laughs> and some of this honestly you're gonna hear me say this more than once you just can't make some of this stuff up it is just that crazy so we're gonna go right into crazy plumbing and right here and then we'll step down here to the next one now look at this here this is a radiator. Now, a lot of, we still got a lot of radiator heaters. Them are the ones that go inside the home. It's got the, you know, the tubes going around it. Well, somebody had a leak on their uh, radiator heater and they thought, well, I know how to fix that. We just tie this rag around it. Look at that. They tied a rag around it. And, and of course, you know, naturally that stops all leaks, right? You know, a rag tied around it. You know, they don't ever get too wet. I just couldn't believe that when they did that. And you know, you find <laughs> You see this more regularly than you might think as I go along and show some more. Now, oh, okay, so here we go. So we got another leak right here. Got a leak right here coming right out of this is going to my washer machine. And, uh, you know, every, the plumbing all is kind of rough looking. Uh, instead of actually fixing the plumbing, how about we just put, let's see, where my cursor at? We just put a little rag around it right there. You know, ain't that fun? That's <laughs> it. <laughs> oh, so there's another rag type leak. Now, that's one, another one we found. What's going on down there? You're going to find a lot of raggy things <laughs> happening to some of this stuff. Now, here's one. The plumber, I don't quite know what he's doing here, but uh, you got, we got several things happening in this crazy video I want to share with you. This is an older home. You can see it's a, a stone and mortar foundation, and it says it's a crawl space. So you got some wires laying on the ground uh, and my drain, which I wanted to share with you because then I got my drain. Now look here, we intentionally cut this right here. So it's at an angle, so it actually flows better when it hits the ground really hits the ground and then we got this strapped up here that's just that's fine uh, then i got my heat duct right here now i got my water draining i don't even know what to think about this we got our water draining right here onto our dirt floor and of course my heat duct is laying right there so well i guess uh, that's a one way of doing it and then and then look here look here at this here i got this concrete block this is what's actually holding up the basement and we're going to get into some other crawl space areas later but this was under the crazy plumbing because i a good spot for it but we just got a concrete block that's been settling so long it's half in the dirt and then i got another wood block up on top of that and that's supporting their home isn't that awesome <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. Now, so here we got we got a tailpipe here. Now, this is an, a tailpipe extension. And what they've done here, instead of actually trying to make my uh, actually work, make my waist arm actually tie into the wall, we put this corrugated pipe right here. And now, what's wrong with corrugated pipe? Well, one, you can see it's pretty thin looking, right? And uh, you can see the corrugation. Well, what happens is when I got like grease, fluid, uh, hair, particle, barnacles, whatever coming through here, they get hung up inside of this corrugation and that starts building up a, a, a blockage. And it's also extra thin. So this is, you know, it's a construction fail, but it's more of like, I don't really know what I'm doing. Uh, help me out down here at the hardware store. Uh, so they, they got them hooked. Hey, I guess it's for draining, at least for now. Wow. All right. So let's keep on rolling here and see what kind of craziness we come up yet. All right. Oh, ho, 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 ho. look at here. We don't need no spout coming out of here. Look at we just drain. We just pee right into there, right into the tub. Look at that. You know. 
And what's funny about that is they really did leave this job. And when I inspected it to see if it was done right, that plumber said, yep, it's all done. We need our money. What about the rest of it? You know, I guess that's all you need. I just think that's yeah, hilarious. I, I, we teased it when I was there to, uh, telling the customer, that's the plumbing peeing in the tub for you. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, you know, I guess of an emergency, that's one thing, but they're selling their house like that. So anyway, that's crazy stuff. Let's move on down here. Oh, okay. Now here, here. Now, honestly, I see this all the time, and I got a lot of YouTube videos out here talking about this. Now, see this right here? This is my stack pipe. This is a vent pipe right here. Now, think of a straw. And that's how these vent pipes work. So you got the straw, and, uh, and if it's got to have enough open at the top as it is at the bottom for it to drain properly. And so if you put your finger on top of the straw, then you don't get a drain, right? So this lead shield, what this is, is for waterproofing. We don't really use lead shields anymore. This is great. Hey, by the way, if you're a roofer, you know, you can take them old lead shields off, sell them a brand new uh, boot to go around that. You can take that lead, make fishing weights with it. You'd probably be a little smarter in what they're doing because they got this clogged off. I got called because they said, Troy, my drain's not draining properly and it's got the vent, everything's here. What is going on? Well, for heaven's sakes, folks, you, you, your roofer just half, half ass, I may say, put this back on, didn't even plugged, you know, left it, didn't even squeeze this lead back down into it, so it actually get a proper flow, so it's not draining properly. Uh, you know, honestly, I know roofers are not plumbers, but if you're going to be messing with plumbing stuff, figure it out, right? You know, come on now, ah. Like I said, you just can't make some of this up here. All right, so let's go on down here to the next one here. And bear with me here. Oh, I love this. Now, these folks here, I don't think they're real construction people that did this one because that's a Pepsi can. Real construction people would have a beer can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which I do see a lot on some of our other shows that we're going to be doing of the construction fails. I got beer cans doing that, but they got a Pepsi can and they make sure that this is properly braced. Now, look, look at what this is. They even, they even indented that Pepsi can to put right there so it'll put right in, so it'll rest right up into it. <laughs> it works. It works. That's all I can say, but it's not, I don't really believe that that would be considered co-compliant. Would you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're going to love this next one. It's just even more fun. All right. Well, I'm all done. Let's turn the plumbing on. Let's turn the water back on. Whoops. I forgot to solder it. Well, or actually, they did solder it. They did such a poor job that it just popped off. When I came in to inspect this job, this is what I found. Only thing I can say is, thank goodness, there's a shutoff on it. So as that they could shut the water from going up. But can you imagine if they would, if that would happen and the water all blowing up through there? This is supposed to be a done job. Honestly, uh, what, what do you do with that? F f don't pay them. <laughs> all right, well, let's move on to some other crazy stuff here. Oh, I love this one here. See, now this one, I just did this inspection on a big commercial job. And you would think, you know, that they would have a, a good maintenance company. And I think that they do because they used baling wire. Look at that, baling wire. They've tied their plumbing together with baling wire. Now, it doesn't look galvanized. No, it's going to rust, which is, I mean, that's crazy enough by itself. But baling wire, I mean, I guess, hey, I grew up in the country. We use baling wire for everything, especially for... Forgive me, especially for our old Fords. <laughs> you know, if you didn't have a roll of bailing wire, you couldn't keep your muffler on. Well, I guess you can't keep your plumbing on either if you don't have your bailing wire. <laughs> bailing wire. Oh, of course, there's some other things happening with this, but I just wanted to show you. That is considered by a maintenance crew, done job. Okay. Yeah. Oh, we got some more going here. Now, look here, look here. We didn't use bailing wire this time. We used heavier wire but we got it hooked up to our plumbing. Look here, and I got hooked up my plumbing. It's secured by my wiring. My wiring is securing my plumbing pipe. Now, I don't know about you, but wire, metal, wire, water, 
I don't think that that's a good combination. I think that, and I don't think that that wire is going to secure much of anything. But uh, wow, you know, <laughs> when I take some of these pictures, when I go through these things, and I see this, I, ha I tell the folks, I got to take a picture of this because I'm going to put together some crazy videos. You guys are going to love this. So the poor people that actually have done this work, when they see this video, oh, they might not want to admit that too much. So anyway, that's uh, that kind of a few odds and ends on our crazy plumbing. I hope that you enjoy crazy plumbing. Now, let's move on to some other crazy stuff. Crazy decks, patios, and porches. There's, I have, I just got a, a few crazy things here that we've done. I got a whole bunch more. It seems like this is where the handyman excel the hot most about doing ridiculous study stuff. And we're going to wander right into this. Ah, now look here, look here. Now this one here, I was checking, to, this was a brand new uh, room addition that was being built on this place. And this carpenter, uh, that would build, poured the concrete, he put the piers in. But my customer kept saying, my house is wobbling. My room addition's got a lot more emotion. Seems like emotion, not emotion, I'm sorry, but motion. And that's what's caught, and, and, and I don't understand what's happening. It's supposed to be secured. So we kind of lifted it up a little bit, you know, the, how, the room addition up a little bit. And then I started pushing around a little bit with, with the Bobcat to see about this pier. Well, look, I mean, that's our piers. Now, we're in the Midwest. This is 32 inches deep. Some places in the country, 48 inches deep. Some places in the country is two foot deep. But there is no place in the country that just is just laying on the surface deep. Now, what do you think? Do you think that that's supposed to hold anything? And this guy thought he charged full price for this. He charged full price and no footings. Well, there, that, that, that's that. That is, yes, yes, it's funny. But what's even worse about this, people could be hurt. People could be hurt because the contractor, he thought he was getting by with a fast one, and now he got caught. And honestly, this one got caught before he got paid. Uh, so luckily, the, the customer didn't get caught on this one. Uh, but wow, I mean, what do you say about that? And there, there's another one of the piers. We knocked another one of the piers over just to check. Now you can see right there, we're lifting this one here and that's a, we're lifting up the house or the cut, they was lifting up the house. But look here, I mean, that is not two, three foot deep. And another pier, big old massive pier, you know, it looks like I really done a lot, but no base. So what, I don't know what to say about that other than this is what con men look like. This is what they do. This is what happens. And this, this guy pulled, paid full price for this, so there was absolutely no reason in the world that this had to happen. Here's, a, here's another picture of, of the pier again. So we got that, you know, I just had to show that again. That just is that, that crazy, you know. Luckily, we had the equipment to check. So what's going down here to more crazy peering? Oh, yeah, okay. We just put our deck post right down on our curb of our uh, patio. Now, for one, we don't know how much of a peering that is. Uh, we don't know how deep that curb is. I grant you it's probably not 32 inches because it's not a wall, it's a curb. Uh, but, uh, but look here, look at my shim. So it, because of that way that concrete is dropping off, we put a little wood shim up underneath it. That ought to hold it. That ought to hold it just fine. <laughs> Oh, but that rest of that air gap, I just love air. I just love air support. I just think I just get such a kick out of that. I laugh about it. Our producer here, Joey, he teases that a little bit about that too. He says, I love, he loves that air support. <laughs> and uh, that air is pretty stout stuff. That'll hold that deck right up there. Of course, it's not secured. It's got air up underneath it. Uh, hey, at least one thing about it, it's not drawing too much moisture from the concrete, right? <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Now here's another one. And I, I just, it's just great. This one here. So I got a post right here. Look here. I got my post. It's just sitting at my, this is, they just cut this down, or the six by six off, laid it on the ground, laid a talk of six by six on top of it, pulled it up here, then put this right up here and just brace it. No securing, no nothing. It's just stand, sitting there freestanding. Of course, this one here, I think that this here pier, when this was poured, I think that we was have a little, I think it must have had a little bit too much to drink that day because uh, 
I don't really look plumb to me like that's straight up and down. <laughs> that is a disaster waiting to happen. Uh, the reason we secure these things like this, like these posts right here, is so as if anything bumps into it or you're up here moving around and your, your, your room addition's shaken, you're not going to fall off the peering system. And it go, it's supposed to be from here to here to here and to, the, and, and to, the, and to your peer underneath the ground for proper support. They don't have nothing here. They just got a disaster. Hey, a beautiful garden though, right? <laughs> I don't know what that's going to help them, but beautiful garden. All right, so here we go. I just love the concrete block stack, the cinder block stack. Yeah, you know, we see this a lot, honestly. But now, so I got these cinder blocks, but I got these, they're not secured to each other. They're just standing up on top of one another. They're nothing, there's nothing tying it together. They're just laying on the ground. Uh, you know, you look at this, they're not even stacked up uh, plumb. They're just kind of crisscrossing here. But I love these up here. Look at my two by twos. So I got this room addition up above here. I'm holding all this weight up here. And it's sitting on two by twos. Here's another one over here. Two by twos? Really? Two by twos? That's right. That's what you get. That, they, this is a high quality work right here. <laughs> and they honestly thought this was done. They honestly thought this was done. Okay, here comes another one here now. I got some other pictures of this one, of this total job, because this was an interesting job here. Uh, the, the, but we're going to, we'll get into that job on another uh, video. But so this has been here so long that the birds are making nest up here. Hey, nice birds, you know, they wouldn't cause any trouble and crapping all over the place. And, uh, but look here, so I got my, got my brace up here. I don't really have nothing nailed, but you know, I talked about securing everything together. How about we just take a uh, strap and we just strap my p support beam, just strap it right to my porch beam post coming up here. And that ought to hold it right. It didn't. Honestly, I can't show you more pictures because this house is going into litigation. It'll be a lawsuit. We tell you we do a lot of lawsuit help when people are going against folks in litigation work. Uh, we get hired for that as a construction expert witnessing. And this one here, the, literally the house was falling off the site. I mean, I, I told them, folks, you need to move. It wasn't just because of this, but that was just part of it. Like I said, I can't show more than that. But isn't that just crazy? But hey, made for a nice birdhouse holder though, right? And, that, and after all, and that's most important, the birds are safe, and now they're dry. <laughs> all right, so here's another, here, a concrete patio. And uh, I guess we don't really need any kind of fill underneath our, our concrete anymore. You know, we don't have to compact it or nothing. We just pour it right on the ground. Folks, this happens all the time. It happens all the time, and we see this settling all the time. Well, this one's just more excessive than others. First, you get your crackage, and then you start getting some moisture in here. Then you start getting wash out, and one thing leads to another, and next thing you know, you got, uh, I don't know what you call this. I'd call it a uh, beginning of a swimming pool. I don't know. Uh, they, got the, they got the fence around it, so they're ready for the pool. Isn't that crazy? Now, I'm going to show you another picture of that real quick here, kind of show you what we have happening here. And uh, so that kind of puts it in perspective of somebody what they're standing. So it's up, I mean, look at that. It's up on top of their, uh, their leg. It's that deep. And of course, you see the gap all the way around it. This is from somebody half doing the job again. We have, there is no backfill up underneath there. They got washed out and they just, they just washed it out altogether. There's no save. They can mudjack this, but there's really no save in this one. It's better just to re-pour over top of it uh, so you don't continue to have in this mess. But I just thought that was a, uh, a, a picture of poor quality. And this is what happens, not instantly, as you can see, this concrete been here for a little bit, but it, over a course of time. And uh, that, that, that is an expensive fix to pour concrete, especially in today's prices. The concrete's going sky high crazy. What, what ain't going sky high crazy, you know, right now? Uh, but, uh, you know, this is what happens. And, and they pay good money for this. Actually, actually, the truth is, this is on a multi-million dollar home. Uh, I can't tell you where, but it's in the rich suburbs of, the, of, of and one of the big cities in St. Missouri here. And, oh, what's going down to the next one here? So that just kind of something to be heads up on. Ah, what happened here? Okay, look here. My 
I literally got my, plum, my, my patio is slipping away from the house. And when it did, it literally broke off a chunk right in through here. And look here, my whole porch is just sliding away. My whole patio, I should say, sliding away. Part of what had happened that caused some of this to happen was this downspout was not going into uh, this underground drain right here. And uh, then, what, then it got that water coming down, seeped up underneath here, and started washing it away. Remember that last photo we was watching about washing away the concrete? That's exact, uh, the dirt under the concrete? That's exactly what happens when this happens like this. Well, then another, then, uh, but when I got here, the problem was still happening. Why? Because right here, my underground drain is clogged. And, and so when a heavy rain comes down, like we just had a tremendous record-breaking rains here uh, in the St. Louis area this, uh, just this last night, well, you get like 10 inches of rain in the evening like that, and you get washed out. Well, this fills up, and then you got all of that water coming down and all that hydrostatic pressure just blowing that away. And this is, this is a big problem. Uh, so how do you check that? Uh, you, just, you just put a garden hose down side of this twice a year spring and fall. Just run the garden, it hose down it, see if it fills up and if how it flows out. And if not, then you got a problem, then you're not getting, you're not fixing your issue. You got to do something about that. But yeah, they thought they'd fix that. They did all right, they fixed it forever. Whoa, so that's kind of some crazy things that we found on patios and, and decks. We got a whole bunch more. I, I could probably do an hour just on the craziness of decks alone. And I got some of them crazy ones out there on my YouTube videos. So check them out too. Bad deck inspections, crazy decks, things like that. You'll love it, they're hilarious. You know, I tell you what I really like more is the nutties. <laughs> and I do love the comments when you folks put comments and such. I try to always reply. And the folks, they just, uh, the other co good contractors are laughing and having a good time, uh, making fun of the contractors doing this poor work. But what I really love is the poor contractors trying to defend it. They just don't even know. As soon as you do that, then you automatically have just, you know, a whole world knows. Don't do business with uh, ABS, whatever, construction. I don't even know that company. I just made up the name. So nothing against that particular company if you're out there. <laughs> I don't want what if I don't want what you guys hit me up on my on my replies on my YouTube videos about, hey, that's my company. Yeah. <laughs> nothing to you guys here. All right. So we'll move on to the next one here. And this would be a fun one here. Roof crazies. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Now the problem with crazies is is it's bad enough that the crazy stuff that happens up on the roof. But if you screw up on the roof, you screw up the rest of the house, you know, that's a big problem. Well, let's head on down here to some of the nutty stuff we got happening with this. Okay, so this, is a, this happens actually a lot in our northern areas. And this is where I, moisture, now you think, you see this right here? This is coming up here, look at that condensate. It's, so it's coming up out of my furnace and then it's freezing and as the moisture then it just continues, what will happen is it will literally clog up my chimney, then you'll start getting carbon monoxide problems. So this is a huge problem. There's several ways of fixing this, but if you have this concern, it's, I'm not gonna really give you any kind of do-it-yourself kind of tips on this one. I really feel, I mean, once you have some professional advice on how to do it, you can take care of it yourself, but get a hold of an HVAC contractor because carbon monoxide poisoning it is serious. And so you wanna make sure that that's taken care of. But yep, right there, you, and that was just a real good one. Now, like I said, we see this a lot. Uh, so this is something to think about. Uh, so make sure a carbon monoxide detector there. Look up on your roof, man. Just look up there and see if you see any kind of water happening. And that'll help you right there. All right, so let's move on down to the next one. I like this one here. Ah, so this is a big commercial job we did. Uh, and uh, we actually got the video of that whole strip mall or shopping center, actually it wasn't a strip mall, the whole shopping center. But this was what we found up here on the roof. Hey, good looking roof, honestly. You know, there was a, you know, it was an older roof, but good looking job. I just wanted to show you what these geese, these are geese goose eggs right here. And, re and, and it's been up here for so long that, 
<laughs> the goose thought that, uh, hey, look here, there's green growing up here. There's a garden growing. This is, it looks like it should be on the ground. It's not down on the predators can't get to me. Great for geese, not good for you. And you can see right here at this egg, that one has actually been broken into. Uh, so I don't know that his nest has been abandoned or if we already had one of the gooselings uh, have already uh, come up out of the egg, hatched out of the egg and took off. But yeah, gardens. <laughs> That's not where a garden goes, you know. <laughs> All right. So that was a good one. And uh, of course, as a country boy, we kind of like goose eggs. And we love geese, but they can be ornery. They can be mean. You would have walked up on this goose, this nest right here, and they'd have been uh, the geese, the, the the gander and the goose over there would have been on top of that. They would have attacked you. They would have attacked you, and come after you. So even though it's fun to look at, fun to tease, you got to be careful with that. All right. So there you go. How many shingles does it take to cap the roof? Well. This is just one side, but I see about a dozen of them by the time you look at the other side. But, and then we got our face nails and uh, I bet they used a bundle of shingles just for the cap. Now it's an exaggeration, but wow, look at that. You know, that is nutty, but that, 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 and it's ugly. It's not just nutty, but it's ugly. So anyway, I wonder if that's a real roofer. Uh, actually, it wasn't. I know who did that, and I and he's laughing right now because I'm giving. He knows I I know who it is, and he's going to be watching it because I told him you got to watch it. You're going to make. I'm going to make you. I'm going to make you a hero. <laughs> You're going to be famous. <laughs> All right. So here you go. Here comes another one. Oh, you'll love this one. All right. Ooh. Now, how is that going to keep any water from coming in there? Great looking job, isn't it? Except, look at that. You think any water get up underneath here? You think any winds could blow up underneath here? I mean, uh, and this was a done job. This was a completed job. And they kept getting water. They, the customers told me, I can't understand what's happening, Troy. I keep getting water inside my house in here. And so I got up there. I started looking. The shingles look good. The roofer couldn't figure out what was happening. Well, I lifted uh, as I was moving around. I noticed it was loose. Up oh, there goes the shingles up there like that and nothing, no security. There's supposed to be a starter strip. There's all kinds of ways that we do this. If you don't have a starter strip for this, at least some get some plastic roof cement. That's how we corrected this. So as it, we just went around the perimeter of the building with some liquid roof cement and, 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 and welded it to the roof itself. Uh, so anyway, that, that, that is, I don't even know what to say about that. That's just crazy. All right. So here we go. Here's another one. I love this one. These folks actually could not, never, never knew that they was getting water into their attic. Don't ask me how you didn't know you didn't get water into your attic. Look at that. Look at the size of that hole right here. Now what this is, is a oh, uh, attic roof uh, uh, ventilation fan. And uh, the, what happens is, is it gets hot enough inside the attic, then the thermostat kicks on and it turns the fan on. So right now what I have is a, uh, and of course this is a shroud that goes around it. You see the connect, uh, the, the uh, iron ring goes around it here. And that, uh, but every time it rains, that water is not only getting in, coming down into the attic, I mean in a hole that's probably about two foot is literally, I mean, how much water can you get in there? Snow, water, ice, especially last night when we had what, record-breaking rains. Uh, wow, you know, if they'd have had something like that, and I'm sure they did, how could you not see that it's getting wet inside your house? Uh, they never even knew. Uh, and not to mention what a fire hazard, electrical hazard that is. It's all soaking wet now. Oh, there you go. Crazy, crazy roof. <laughs> I, I, I don't know what to say about that. So yeah, other than sometimes you just can't get loonier than some of these do-it-yourselfers. What's even worse, at least a do-it-yourselfer has an excuse. These other real contractors, they don't even know. But this here, this is just something that they didn't even see. This is why we need to have a supplementary inspections. Also, too, you can see down through here, then that storm that blew this off also blew some shingles off. You see that coming down up through here? So anyway, that's some of that right there for us. Let's move on to some more crazy stuff. And this one I like right here. We got some crazy attic crazies. 
stuff that we found up in the attic. Now I have found there again, we're going to, maybe we just ought to do some of these just strictly a whole hour just on the crazy, some of the crazy things in specific areas. Uh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. All right. So here is my ductwork right here. See that? And that's an imagination pipe right there. So that's one of the invisible pipes that connects this to this. It just fell. So guess what? Well, they're, and this is actually their chimney pipe. So all that carbon monoxide, all that unburnt gases are going up inside of there. And it's literally, it's not exiting anything. And of course, we don't, they didn't do anything to actually screw it together. We just taped, we just taped it. We just used some uh, heat duct tape and taped it together. And, uh, and it just probably, now I didn't get up any further in this particular picture, but it probably just got rusting from up above here and just rusted that joint away and just dropped it. But they didn't even look, you know, didn't even look. It's all done. Looks good to me. Oh, oh here we go. And here is another one of our uh, ceiling attic fans. Look at that. And hey, look how it's supported. I just love that, that proper support. That's just the wire that's hanging. <laughs> that's the wire that's hooked it up. And here's another one of the wires going to it. That's all they have. Now that, I guess if you want to keep your attic full of air, I don't know. But what do you think? Think that's safe? Do you think that's actually doing anything? I'll tell you what it is doing. It's creating a vacuum, and it's cre which is causing you more grief inside your house because when you create this vacuum, that's actually, is which some of my other, uh, you could get us on about the house and some of our podcasts where we're talking about how to save money with energy. Well, you don't want to create a vacuum in your attic because then that sucks in all your cold air or your hot air from below and brings it right up. Uh, and, uh, but anyway, that, that's just a hazard altogether. Can you imagine what will happen whenever that falls? And yes, someday it will fall. Oh, here comes a good one. I love this. All right. Hey, we need to support this roof. This roof is sagging on me. So let's get some boards and just stick up underneath there. So what's crazy about this? Well, for one, do you think anything straight? You know, I think the guy must have been a little bit crooked when he was saying in there putting him in here. Uh, but look, uh, we got, and we had to double it up because this old one just wasn't working. So I just put another one beside it. You know, heck, one didn't work, two maybe would. I don't know. Well, it didn't. Look here, you can see it, it sagged so bad it's cracked right here in my joist or my rafter right here. But you can see there's not nailed together, they're not secured, they're just leaning. Uh, this one's not up underneath there, it just toenail or nailed it to the joist here or the rafter here. But we got them all the way up and down through here. And uh, you know, uh, any kind of roof movement or anything is going to keep shaking it. And, and, and anything is the whole idea of making something straight up and down is the plumber as it's plumb straight up and down that what makes it strong when it leans as we know when we start leaning you know like if you've had like this person here that's probably had too much to drink and started tipping a little bit well you kind of lose your balance well that's what happens there and it falls I don't even know why they thought that was good but they thought that was tremendous oh here's another one here's some more tremendous work here Look here. Oh, you thought the other one was funny. You thought the other one was goofy. Look here. So we're not straight at all. You know, I, I think that they're, they're, we're not plumb. We're just going at an angle again. We don't have nothing secured. We got this kind of toe nailed together here, holding this together, kind of toe nailed a little bit. Here, I got my board. My board is literally flat. Now, we have our boards. You're supposed to be on end. That's what gives us the strength. We don't even have the proper strength. We don't even have it secured properly. This is just a disaster. And they paid somebody to do this. They really paid somebody to do this. Makes you think, if you pay somebody to do some work and you want to make sure it's done right, maybe you need to call somebody like Galloway Building Services to come in there and take a look at it for you before you pay them the money. Because once these people left, their tail light warranty's all expired and it's all done, you're gone. So anyway, that, the, 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 I, I don't even, I don't even know. It looks like some of the scrap, it looks like they got scrap wood. It looked like they found it at the dumpster, some of the wood, and because look at that, it's even broke off right here. I, they just, I think they just found some scraps and put it together and we call it fixed. 
unbelievable. How'd you like to be the roofer up there working and uh, have this collapse on you? Or a big heavy snowfall, which is not uncommon. You know, a wet snow can create a heavy live snow load on top of you. So yeah, wow. Yeah, that's, uh, that's just some of the crazies we find in here. And that is some of the roof crazies that we're attic crazies that we got. So let's go on here and we're going to move into another world. And actually, this is uh, going into electric crazies. Now, electric crazies, uh, the sad thing about electric is, is that, yeah, we might be doing some nutty stuff, but it's, electric is dangerous. Electric can, you know, you do goofy stuff, you do stupid stuff. It ain't like, you know, uh, using scrap wood or something. People can get hurt. People can die from being doing stupid stuff. So you're going to see a, a wide range of different things that we put together on this one to kind of make it so as that it's, you know, try to make it fun, some kind of make it crazy, but also want you to make sure that when you are looking at these things, you too will be able to make sure that you don't have this kind of work happening in your place or you don't have this in your home right now, our building. So this, and I find this a lot, look right here. So what we've done is that we got this wire running right out of my box here, uh, my, my light box here. Uh, we don't know that that's hot or not hot. We got the new light here, so we're going to figure we had some problems with the old one. Uh, but if you got bare wire, how do you know that that's not hot? And if you're crawling around in the basement or if you're crawling around in an attic and you got a crawl space and you got these tight spots, man, you hit that wire, you're going to, be, you're going to hear you in the next county hollering, screaming, because it's going to sting. Now, oh, here you go, here you go, here you go, here you go. This is on a furnace. This is one I just found recently. And uh, so it's a two, uh, two our, all electric furnaces, at least in our area, are all 220, at least for residential. We get into other areas and different HVAC systems. That's a different. But look at this. This is where a, we actually we have a cover plate goes over this. A lot of times we'll put breakers in this particular opening and uh, depending on the furnace system. But look right there. Do you think that if you ever walk into this in the middle of the night and you're trying to change the filter or something, do you think that 220 is not going to put you on your butt if you accidentally stick your finger in there? Or look right up here. This is my right up here. So when this, uh, I can get any moisture come out of our heat ducts that come rolling down through here. Woo, there you go, man. And that whole thing will be hot. Uh, what I mean by hot, it'll be electrocuting hot, you know, kind of like electric chair hot. Uh, yeah, except without the wet, wet hat, uh, that, that you'd, be, you'd be doing some smoking. Yeah, that, and, and the HVAC guy, he fixed this, he charged him, he corrected it, he left, and that's what they got. It's even worse than what it was. All right, here we got some more. Now, this is another on a commercial job here. And, uh, but look here, we can, you can see it right here, the line breaker control, uh, there's another control. We just leave these open, you know? Uh, so why, we did a really great job of all this conduit, putting it all together. We just decided we just didn't need any kind of, kind of cover plates for that. I guess, uh, you know, fingers beware. Uh, that, that, that's, isn't that something? I don't know where, what the maintenance, I guess it must have been late Friday, you know, and the day was over and we're trying to go home or it was a, a hangover Monday. I don't know which, but wow, <laughs> that, that's spooky. You know, honestly, that is, that is spooky. All right, here we go. Oh, I love this one. So, <laughs> ah, oh. <laughs> okay, okay. So here we are. We're in a bathroom, right? You can see we're in a bathroom and we're right above a sink. And so we have to put our GFCI in here so we don't get electrocuted, right? That's the whole idea of our GFCI. So uh, to, to hit this. But somebody just felt like we just didn't need to actually secure it in the wall. We didn't need to put a cover plate over it. But I got my safety device in here by George and that's all that counts, right? I got the safety. I got my GFCI. Except what the heck are you doing with the rest of it? You know, and is this a done job to you? Well, folks, I have to admit this. If I told my wife that was a done job, she would box my ears and send me back in there and do it again. 
<laughs> and maybe, maybe his wife should have done the same thing to him because that, that is not done. Yeah. Oh, oh. okay. Now here, we got some more of this stuff like that. Look right here, right here. So I got my extension cord run into this. Ain't that, I mean, that's a laundry room. Uh, look at that, look, really looks good plugged into there, don't it? Too bad we didn't secure the box. I just got to reach back in there and find it, you know, behind the wall. Maybe that extension cord right here, that cord right here, maybe that's what's holding it against the wall. Maybe that's what they're using for securing it. Maybe, maybe somebody's just a nut. Oh, <laughs> but I laugh about it. But it's not, it's funny, yes, but it is serious and it's crazily serious because it just shows you cannot finish halfway do a job when you're doing electric like this. You cannot just, let me, they didn't even begin to even secure this one anywhere. So I don't know that, that hey, but it is a pretty yellow wall, right? All right, here comes another one. Oh, so these like these breaker, these, these boxes right here. Uh, we don't, you got, there, there's a reason we secure our electrical boxes. I think common sense tells us why, why we do that. But heck, you know, let's use it anyway. That's safe, right? Bare wires right here, well, bare all back in through here. But I got my wire plugged in, my, my extension cord plugged in here. Uh, that, well, what? I don't know what is anybody thinking on this. But this is, a, this is some of the goofball stuff that we find. Oh, we got a whole bunch more goofball stuff. This is just some of the fun stuff, some of the beginning of it. Let's move over here to the, the next one. What do we got here? What do we got coming up here? Uh, eh. All right, so, <laughs> all right, so here we go. See that there red, that caulking right there? That is, we, we know this fireproof caulking. So right now we know this all been fireproofed, but what this guy did, He's got this wonderful conduit run down through here and his box and his wires and run up through here. But I guess he thought he was just going to glue it with fireproof caulking and glue my connections together. Now look what's happened. Do you think that that's either fire safe or do you think that is actually holding anything? I mean, not right now. You can see that that box right here is being held up by this wire. Or do you just think that we just have another nut out there working? Uh, yeah, I, I found this. You, 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 you know, it wouldn't be so bad if people honestly didn't think this was fine. You know, honestly, and, and they're doing this kind of work for people. Uh, it's, uh, it's too much. It's too much. Oh, here we go. Talking about too much. Here comes another one. Now, first you're going to think this is plumbing. And the plumbing itself is a pretty hilarious. But what I really, I'm showing here, what we did is we run our cord and uh, wiring and uh, look at my beautiful splice, you know, let's not put that in a junction box. Let's just plat tape the thing together and stick it in a water line right into the basement wall and it's going right into here under the ground. Really? Under the ground? By my, by my plumbing? By my drain? And splice together? I mean, uh, wh wh who, who in the world thought of this? I'd like to meet him because they got a heck of imagination. You got to admit that. Uh, that and look, I see now. You can't really see this real good here, but they've already been tagged, and uh, you can't see it real good in this picture. I wish it could have because it's already saying beware. Uh, this is a problem, and uh, the city's already called it. But they, I guess that's when they use the black tape to fix it. You know that that took care of it. The electric tape. I don't know. <laughs> here you go. Here you go. Here's a better picture. Oh, here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is right here. This is a better picture of the, of the warning to the occupant. See that? They actually warned them uh, of this wonderful electric job. And, uh, but look, they got it wire taped, but they used, at least they used electrical wire tape and they didn't use like uh, duct tape, huh? <laughs> oh, yep, that's good. Uh, warning to the occupant. Guess it should have been written in another language other than English so they could have understood it, huh? Oh, all right. So let's see what we got here. What do we got coming up here? Oh, all right. So what we've done here, I think this is really awesome. What we have is an open box face of our junction box. Uh, this is up in the attic, actually. You could tell by my trusses here and my gussets. And uh, so what we got here, but decon. 
So what we've done is we've, we want to make sure that we got plenty of good mouse food for our mice, and that way they can eat a little decon, they can eat a little wiring, they can get in there and do a little bit of chewing. I found mouse droppings all around here, this thing. Oh, and that customer got so mad at me when I told him, not only do you got open to some pro electrical problems, but you got mouse droppings. I don't have any mouse droppings up there. I said, well, somebody put decon up there. Apparently somebody knew you had something. Uh, and what would it have been? 50 cent for a cover plate for that. Well, under today's price, it's probably double that, a dollar. But come on, really? Uh, uh, the mice don't need any more to eat. You've already done a great job of feeding them. Uh, and th that, that's a done deal right there. So let's move on here. I go, we got a more of these electrical crazies. And here we go. What do we got here? What do we got here? Oh, there you go. You know, I just really don't need any wire nuts, sir. I just wire tape these wire tape. I just screw these things together. And, you know, touching this metal and everything, that don't hurt nothing. That just kind of gives you a little bit of a shock. That don't hurt nothing. Look at this. Look at this. They didn't even spend a few cents on wire nuts. They just they just taped, they screwed it, you know, tightened it together, twisted the, nut, the wires together, and away we go. That was a done deal. They don't even have a setup that they can even, they don't even have a setup that they could even put it inside there. I don't even know what the box is representing, other than they just thought that, well, it looked pretty, you know, pretty good to me. Looked good from my house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. What do we got here coming up? We got some more of these. I mean, it's like this. I, it, yeah, it is funny. But like I say, say, over and over again, it's serious. And it's not just serious, but it's just raw stupidity on this stuff. Oh, here we go. I love my, I love my extension cord spider web. So what do we got here? Well, we got a whole bunch of crazy happening here. I got my extension cord just hanging up here. Hey, uh, but I got my adapter so I could put my three-way into it. And my, my light box, it's just hanging and dangling. That's not going to really support much of anything. But what? Uh, but I, all this extra weight of the cords, that don't hurt nothing. Yeah, you know, a little weight dragging on them wires, that don't hurt none. And of course, let's look over here. And so my conduit, uh, uh, this actually, so what we had to do, we had to take loose our drywall right here. We had to unsecure our junction box because my wire was too, I just didn't have enough wire. So my wire is short going into my box from here to here. And uh, so we just let that dangle. That works. I mean, wow, really? Uh, I, there you go, yeah, and you see it all the time. You see this stuff all the time, especially when it comes to electrical. Uh, oh, here we go, here we go, here we go. We're going into extension cords. This was the extension cord spider web. Now we're going into, well, the, another extension cord. And this really was an extension cord. Actually, you just didn't see the rest of it because I wanted to get a good picture of it for my customer. But there, this was wiring a wall AC unit. And instead of unplugging it, we just like pull the wires loose and just let them hang. But hey, I got it secured. I got it properly secured by my wire shelf, but it's a vinyl coated wire shelf. So that ought to make it safe, right? <laughs> oh, wow. Put some wire nuts on the end of these things, guys. You know, it, it just walk back to the truck and get a wire nut. If you don't have any extra wire nuts, buy some, keep them in the truck. Come on. Uh, it, 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 can you imagine somebody hit the switch? and you accidentally bump across that, you're, you're gonna jump for your skin. That, wow. All right, here we go. Oh, oh, I love it. <laughs> now, hats off to this person. This, <laughs> this one takes some imagination to come up with this. So what we have here is this, uh, we had a light at one time but we didn't need the light anymore. So what we wanted to do is have an extension cord coming out of this because I got to plug in several things into this. So I need at least a three-way extension uh, out, uh, plug in right here. So what they did is they literally, like I said, they took some time to figure this one out. They stuck this wire into here, wired it up inside of here, and now they have a switch, now it's hooked to a switch because it is a light, and this was hooked to a switch. 
So that way they could turn on all their lights or all their power with a switch. But look at this. Do you think that that do you think that's co-compliant or do you think that's just idiot compliant? I say we're talking idiot compliant. That <laughs> I just I couldn't wait to share that one. That was just too funny. That was just too funny. OK, here we go. <laughs> wow. All right. Extension cord. We're still on the extension cord. So we just run our cord right out of this. They come right out of my crawl space. Just going to run a line right out of my wall right on through here. They actually just run out to this man's shed and uh, just land on the ground. We don't have wiring made for outside. We don't have any kind of uh, proper support. We don't have nothing. Now, can you imagine? Now, think about this. I'm weed eating. I got the power on. And I'm coming around here and I'm trying to keep my weeds down. And I accidentally nicked that. How, and I'm standing in wet grass. What do you think is going to happen? Well, folks, sadly, I had a good friend that found this out the hard way. And he's no longer with us. And, and uh, it was just an accident. And it, his wasn't even this stupid. It was just a real accident. So if something that could be a real accident, whenever you set yourself up like this, this is past accident. This is just border. This ain't even borderline stupid. This is just stupid. Bonhoeffer's definition of stupid: doing something that it actually hurts yourself on purpose. That's it, right there. Bona fide. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here's some more. You're gonna love this. So we're outside here. So this is a conduit. This is my. This is coming up. Now there's a meter base up above this. And this is my main power coming into my meter base. Now, I guess we just don't need any kind of adhesive, any kind of glue, any kind of securing. As a matter of fact, this air imagination station right here that's actually waterproofing this, uh, it was pretty good because I sure didn't even see it. It was that, that good and visible. But just think all that water running down in here. You got mice getting inside of there. You got other kind of critters getting inside of there. And uh, if you come through there weed eating again, now we're not talking about 110 going out to your building. We're talking some massive power coming into your home. And I guarantee you, you hit that, you're going to rock. Now, I guess over on this one, we, that, that electrician, he, was, uh, he, got, he stayed till the job was done. This one, I don't know what to say about this one. Look at this. I mean, this, this, this is funny, but it's not. It's just right down dangerously stupid. Now, we're going to talk about dangerously stupid. Here comes another one. I did this one on a resort, uh, which I'm not, I can't tell you, but we did a big resort inspection and uh, up by a, a, a one of major lakes here in the Midwest. And uh, so what they did is they have underground power going into their one of their uh, stri motel uh, strips uh, of rooms. And they didn't put the conduit together. They literally, uh, and this guy told me, he said, I, he, he argued with me. The owner argued. He said, this was just fine. I paid a master electrician to do this. And I said, you might have paid a master electrician to do it, but it wasn't a master electrician's job. Look at this. So, I mean, you hit this. I mean, this is a heavy duty line too. You hit this, somebody drops something on this in the ground. You know, if you're walking across it, not to mention the little magnetic field that's going around it. These are all problems. And this is huge, folks. And there, and there was no need in it. There was, and, and it had been sitting like this for quite a while. I'm, because he honestly thought the owner of the property thought this was fine. He didn't know any better because he believed what he considered to be a master electrician. Now, I don't honestly believe it was a master electrician. It was somebody that actually knew enough to put it in conduit, but not conduit on top of the ground, huh? And not secured. I mean, there's so many things happening with this. You just, I mean, you got to stay stupid forwards and backwards and you still are not going to be able to describe this. Yep, that, and this is what we see. Oh, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. So here is my outdoor out outlet. And I'm going to plug in my fountains in this, and I'm plugging in my outdoor radios and, and all my other stuff that we have fun with in the summertime and, and my fish pond in it. Okay, where's my, it's not GFCI connected. And even if it was, look at this, the cover plate doesn't even cover. So what we have here is I have an outdoor box. This is supposed to be made for a waterproof box. You know, hey, we started right, but 
We're sitting on the ground. Now, no snow is going to build up that high, huh? I mean, even if you're living in like, you know, even Atlanta, Georgia, we've got good friends. We work down there. They get snows that get that deep. Not often, but enough. But this wasn't even that. This was in a northern state that I found this jet. And you know, so no, no cover plate, no waterproofing, no anything. Can you now picture yourself? You walk over there and you're going to plug something in. The grass is wet. This is wet. You plug it in. Bang! You're going to get it. You're going to, you're going to rock your socks and you're going to only be happy that only your socks got rocked. That is not only stupid and dangerous, but this is just, I, I, I don't know. Folks, if you don't know what you're doing, sometimes it's best not to do it. Uh, you, you, there's no need to hurt yourself. Okay, here we go. Oh, if I would have only found another screw, I could have actually secured my box. I got this oh, beautiful watertight box. I got the, 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 this box here all done. I got my gasket, look at this. Oh, and I got my GFCI, and I got my cover plate over it. It's all safe, except I just forgot to screw the dadgum thing together. It, it, there it is. What do you say? Uh. Not, oh, okay, I, sometimes words, I, I, I don't even know how to say it. You know, you just, it's just, I don't even know what to say. That's just too stupid to even imagine. Come on, what do you think they got screws for? And it's just a matter of a few cents uh, and, and you would have it. Uh, well, we got, oh, here we go, here we go. Another one of my cords, I just love these. So I got, I'm gonna bring me an extension cord out here and wire this up to something here. Maybe I might've put a light or something. I don't know what they was doing with this, but they just run that wire on out. And uh, of course, I guess they could maybe say it's a neutral wire, but how do you know until you get zinged and they put a little wire tape up on top of it, you know, no wire nuts or anything. That, you know, that ought to be, that ought to be safe. That ought to be good not. Wow. Here you go. Here you go. Here you go. Here comes another one. Now, this one here, the guy was going to, he wiring his air conditioner, but apparently he just had one too many wires. So we just leave this one laying on the ground, you know, and, and see how that works out for everybody. I mean, we just, I mean, just, it just literally got a little conduit here. This is not here. This is here. It was energized. It was hot. I tested it to make sure that if it was not hot or not, because I was going to try to move it so it was not nobody could get hurt while I was looking at the job. But look at this. And uh, they just left it, just left it on the ground. Now, of course, water, snow, anything like that, that's not going to affect it. I don't know. At least they could have did is put it in one of them uh, uh, waterproof boxes like we've seen on the other slides. At least maybe they'd have something. I don't know what, but maybe something. Wow. Oh, here you go. Here you go. And I like this one here. This is my power line coming down into the house. Now, we saw the one coming up into my meter that came up into the meter. But now this one here, this is coming down. But look here. We've lost our, we've, uh, we don't have our support anymore. We can't hung our wire up here. My wire is all frayed. Uh, and it's all tore right here. It just literally tore, uh, ripped us apart. And so what we've done, instead of actually securing my wire, I just stick it behind the downspout. The downspout will secure it. You know that metal downspout where all the water comes down, you know, and heavy rain or when it's raining? That's just fine. That'll work perfect for us. <laughs> the, 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 it, I, I don't know. What, what do you say? I, I say, oh, I'll tell you what you say. You ask the person who did it to stick his tongue on it and ask him how that works for it. I think that'd be hilarious. That's it's a good way of getting rid of the stupid, and you won't have to pay him too because he'll be he'll be his tongue will be burned off. He won't be able to complain. <laughs> okay, that's just mean. I can't help it. All right, here here's another one. So what we've done is that I need a light. I need a, I need a light over here. Uh, and uh, because I got people wandering around and I want to make sure the deer or anybody wandering around, I got my motion lights, that's just awesome. So what, how about I just run the, my wire and just tie right into my mast here and uh, just, just wire tape it up. There you go, that ought to work. That ought to be just fine. Uh, you know, uh, that, uh, 
I don't, okay, we'll just move on. Sometimes I just get carried away because it's just too stupid to believe. What do we got here? What do we got in the next one? Ah, here we go. Now, this one isn't as bad as some of what we see and what we've already looked at. But this is a problem. And uh, when you get your house recited, this happens a lot. Now, in this case, it was the painter uh, that just disconnected my weather head here. And now that's supposed to be secured. Now, you can see where it was secured right up here. And that keeps this any kind of snow, heavy weight, ice, especially ice from pulling that off and pulling this down. This is the main line coming into your home. So you know, again, this is some pretty heavy duty wiring coming in here, and this is a problem. Uh, and it happens more, actually this is happens more than you might ever believe. I would doubt, I would not doubt if I don't see uh, of houses that are freshly recited, 50% of the time I see this. Why is that? And is because, and I've asked the guys, why is that? Because we're scared of touching it. It's hot wiring. Well, if you're scared of touching it, don't you think that that's kind of dangerous? Just saying. So here we go. Oh, this is a good one. So we got a couple things happening here. So I built my deck. I built this deck. I've already, this is missing my power box here, my meter box here. And what we've done is that uh, this was here long before we ever built the house or built the deck. When they built the house, we put them up here. It's an underground service. But I put my deck in here. Now I'm really right here. So I could actually, any time I'm out here wrestling around or playing or something, bang, I could run right into my meter box here. And uh, woo, up there you go. Well, this one's been hit so hard that they've literally disconnected my box, my meter box from the home itself. So not only is it too close to the ground or to the floor, which is a code violation. This is also night tight, no longer secured. That's not good. And that means anybody that's, that bumps into that and them wires get loose, well, I think you can figure out the rest of that story. So, in, so lesson, meter boxes are not, check your municipality codes, but they cannot be just a few inches off of the ground. Uh, that is a code violation for safety. And there's a reason for that. Here you go, and I like this one here. So I got my light going up here, and I got my all my conduit, and oh, Troy, I'm so proud. I did a great job, except I just run out of uh, cover plates. So what I now, I just got this switch right in here. Just reach inside the box with the wires, and you'll be fine. Turn my light on. You know, this is a, a, a just really just a cover plate, folks. If you don't have a cover plate for your outlets, at least just wire it up and put a solid plate over it or something, you know, waterproof to keep, you know, the people from sticking their fingers in it. People come up here at nighttime to ring the doorbell or something or trying to hit that light switch in the dark. Guess who's going to get sued? It's going to be you. It's going to be you, the homeowner. And that's actually kind of what this one was about when I was doing the inspection of this one, because we do litigation work and trip and fall, people get hurt on construction, poor construction work. And this is, a, this is what happened in this one. Luckily, they only got stung. They didn't get killed, luckily. So let's move on into some of our other areas. And uh, this ought to be fun right here. I love my air support crazies. I, these are just hilarious. People literally leave these things out there just a dangling. And uh, so this is an air deck support. And what do we got here? So when this one here, look at my post. Ah, well, at least it's sitting on, con that's sitting on concrete. Of course, you don't see how bad the rest of it is. But my post right here, what's supporting that? Just them nails holding in there? No support other than that? Do you think if you hit that hard enough that that'll twist, that that won't come loose? Nope, we just got that air support. That air support take care of it. That'd be good. That'd be good. Okay, here you go. This even, we're going to get more fun. So here we go. Actually, I just have to cut a little bit of, just got to cut a little bit out of this floor joist. And uh, uh, I just need a little bit more cut out. I, I just need a little bit more cut out. Well, that ought to hold just fine. Look at that. I got like, what, of an eighth of an inch of my floor joist that's supporting. 
that two by tens, you don't need a two by ten. You only need an eighth of an inch. You don't need two by ten. That, that I don't know how it passed any codes. I don't know what anybody was thinking, but air that's what we call <laughs> crazy air support. It's and, and, but it looks good, right? I mean, it looks like it got chopped. Look like somebody grabbed a beaver by the butt and cut this out here. Yeah, honestly, this is another one. And we just cut this one out altogether. Heck, fire, we don't need that. That, air, that, that separation right there, you know, that, that joist does not need to go clean across and support anything. That air support will hold that. That air will hold all that. You know, now, now my post is, that my, my, see, my floor joist is dangling. My floor joist is dangling. There is absolutely no, no support whatsoever in that. Yep, that's good. All right, here you go, new construction. So we do a lot of new construction inspections. And uh, now this guy, what happened was, is they came back and said, well, we're gonna pour concrete up underneath this. Well, actually, that's really not what happened. They actually got the foundation off. And so when they put their cripples up in through here, their jack studs, and I mean, sorry, their jack studs in through here, then see, that's just not, that's just nothing there. That's just literally not holding. Only thing holding that is this, this right here. Now, this is in the basement. That means I got two floors and a roof above that, all that weight. There's a reason that the engineer called out for that many jack, st uh, jack studs right there. So that's not holding nothing. And here's another one and another job by the same builder on another home. Apparently they have foundation issues. Their foundation crew is not catching up with what they're doing. And uh, so you, they're, they're not gonna pour this concrete floor all the way up to this. They could, uh, and they're going to have to do something now, but uh, that's, you know, that's normally not how it's ever done, but they think that that's good. Now they'll cut that board off right here and then they'll put their door right into here. But there you go. Air support, that'll work. Uh, what do we got going down here? We got some more of this air support business going here. I just love air support. There were some of my funny ones here. Oh, yeah, well, I could have put this with crazy foundations and patios, but uh, I, was, I had to put it here because of air support. This concrete slab is being held up by air, just air. Now, of course, we don't want to pin them. You say, some people might say, well, you pin your patio to your foundation. You don't do that because these two are moving at two different, well, honestly, because they're both moving at two different rates uh, at, at, because of the temperature contrast, uh, densities, uh, combination of things happening. So that would just cause more trouble. Then I got my downspout right here. So, you know, it's, it's not good enough that I got air support. I'm going to continue washing this out and then having this problem right here. And this actually could be under crazy gutters too, you know, because of the two. But it's a, it's a combination of idiocy in one picture. Uh, and uh, so that kind of some of our air support crazies. I, I got a whole bunch of air support crazies. It is hilarious. I don't know what people are doing. I don't even know what they're thinking. You know what? I don't know that common sense hasn't left the building and not coming back. Uh, so let's go into the next one here. I think you'll really enjoy these two. So we got crazy gutters. Now, this is, a, yeah, this is just a few little odds and ends here. Uh, you can't get too stupid with gutters, you know, they, but, but this is some good ones here. So here we go. You know, sir, I just didn't feel like I needed to put all them nails into that. You know, you got enough nails holding up that gutter. And when that gets all full of ice and heavy weight, you want it to sag. You want it to fall. And uh, you shouldn't expect me to actually drive that whole nail into there. You know, uh, no kidding. I, I, and I find this all the time, all the time, where they just don't halfway do this. And here we go. I just tell you what, folks, maybe I just don't need a downspout or a gutter all the way across my house. I only need it to hold the tree branches and, and, and grow my little garden up here. So they got not only a garden here, but they got a garden up in their shingles too. You see that? Yeah. They got, I mean, they, lit, <laughs> they literally got trees and brush growing in their roof, you know, but this here is a, this is a bona fide garden right here. Yeah. Just joking. <laughs> really? and you didn't think that you even needed any more than that. Wow. And here you go. Here's, and this is a commercial building and uh, of, a, of a restaurant here in town. And so anyway, I was up on the roof, take a look at this. Now, what are we doing? 
what are we doing? Well, I guess we just didn't feel like we only needed gutter. We didn't need gutter on the whole roof. We only needed it just for this small section here. Uh, of course, this wood is so rotted here. I don't know how it hold anything anyway. But what are we doing? That water just runs off here, runs down here, runs into my windows. And I wonder why I got moisture problems. You know, I wonder why I got problems. Look at this. And uh, you can see I had a good rain that day. I did the inspection. Uh, I, I, really? You, you couldn't even put end caps on it. At least you could have had an excuse by putting an end cap on it and a downspout. <laughs> I guess it saved money. That works. So, anyway, that's some of our gutter crazies. Uh, let's move on to some other stuff that we got crazy. Window crazies. All right. So, uh, we could have a whole encyclopedia of them, but we're going to work a little bit on window crazies here. This is what we got. All right. So, this is what we did. I put this new window in. And I didn't, I, believe me, I didn't do this. I'd be embarrassed. I'd be ashamed to walk away from this. But what we did is I just didn't have enough wood to fill it in or insulation. So I just used this foam, you know, this, uh, this foam I put in here. It's not even made for exterior rating. It's not made to be exposed to the elements. And we just glued this metal shim right here to it. I got broken right here, my, my J channel. See, that? that's J channel right through here. That's broken. Water's coming down through here, but they sprayed foam in behind that, hoping that's going to stop the water from getting in our house. And through here is all foam. Uh, that is not a window replacement. That's a window screw up. That's what it should be called, window ignorance. Come on. Okay, but here's a good one right here. Ah, I wonder, do you think this is going to be good enough to hold this window in here when I put this new window in? They did. They put this window in here on this wood right here. And then that's, that's my, yeah, that's my thumb right here. You can see that, yeah, even old carpenters uh, don't know. <laughs> even old carpenters hit the wrong nail. Uh, but look at that, that finger. I could have stuck that finger even further into, the, into it. I was afraid that if I kept on pushing, I'd be pushing them in all the way inside the house. It was that rotted. Now, what do you think that's supporting? Well, but they got nice paint on it. They painted it up, made it look pretty. If you hadn't had somebody that knew what they was doing looking at it, they would have thought that was just fine. Uh, and, 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 it's, and it's because the last window was a problem. They didn't figure out why the last problem was, so we just replaced it with another window. And the window manufacturer, the window companies that come out there and place these windows, a lot of times they really don't care, you know, what the problem caused. They're out there to replace a window, not fix the problem. Do you hear me? They're out there to sell you and fix, sell, put a window in, but not fix the problem. Why? Because they don't care. And besides, it's not their fault, you know. Well, it is their fault. It is, and it, this, is, this is totally uncalled for. So anyway, that's some of the it crazy that we see with that right there. Let's move on here and see what other nutty stuff we can find. Crazy weatherproofing. Okay, so what do we got here? <laughs> I love it. So we got back to rag time again. So we got some moisture coming out of my out, uh, of my basement wall. So this is not my hydrant leaking. This is the water coming through my wall. And so I just stick this rag in here and that'll stop it. I just love this rags type, these rags. We see this a lot. Oh, I got some more pictures of this, you got, of, of this stuff like this. But at least it's a pretty green one. It's camouflage, right? You would never see it. Uh-oh, hey, hon, where's my underwear? Oh, I had to stop the leak in the basement, hon. Oh, I hope you didn't use my blue pair. Mine's my favorite pair. Well, I'm sorry, honey, but I put it right beside your favorite towel, right beside it. They did. They stuck boxer shorts into this. Boxer <laughs> Oh, I imagine the mice will make a nice net bed for them right there. Yeah. <gasps> boxer shorts. I guess, uh, yeah, anything will work in a, in, in, in a quick, if, in a, if you needed something quick. All right, here we go. Well, I just run out of your underwear, Troy, so I'm just going to have to use a little aluminum foil. Thank goodness for the meth heads out here, because that way I can get me a little bit of a foil to stick around there. That's watertight. Of course, my wa once again, my wire going into it, so we got a combination of a crazy here. But it, not only did we put aluminum foil into here, 
We didn't even put it all the way around it. And uh, what are they thinking? Aluminum foil? Uh, I guess they thought that was a good looking job. It is definitely an interesting job. So what do we got on this next one here? Oh, some more. We got, we got, we got aluminum foil going around. It's tightening it up around my perimeter of my ductwork here. And uh, actually, this is a vent going out for my dryer. And then I just stuck in, well, I guess that we don't need the dryer. We just stick our, 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 our dirty clothes right in there, and that'll block it off right there. So, hey, if you want to know where that dish towel's at, just run on down the basement. Get you one. It's stuck in the vent. That'll take care of it. And, uh, and if you need to do a little cooking, grab you some foil. <laughs> really, that's it right there. Ah, Let's move on to some more. Ah, there you go. See, that's the other side. Of, I believe that's the other side of my washcloth. <laughs> Look at that. Just stuck right through there, just nice and proud. And at least it was a clean cloth, honey. I didn't put in dirty laundry. I cleaned to put a clean one in there. Uh, that's weatherproofing. That is bona fide weatherproofing. Now that is Yankee ingenuity. And... Uh, the Southern boys, they would get a kick out of that. Oh, here we go. We just didn't have enough rags. We had to do this one right here. And this is some more weather, weatherproofing. And they just stuck this rag right into it, holding it. Rags. I mean, I guess that's one way to use your rags up. Uh, I don't... <laughs> nuts. Just nuts. But, hey, you know what? At least it's, uh, At least they're trying to do something. So anyway, that looks like that pretty much wraps up all our slides today. Uh, I was kind of hoping I had some other ones stuck in here, but apparently I didn't get them put into this one. So we'll put them in the next uh, uh, construction uh, inspection fails. I hope you enjoyed it, folks. I really enjoyed sharing these with you. Uh, it's, you know, sometimes, it, like I said, sometimes it's funny. Sometimes it's just stupid. Sometimes it's dangerous. And sometimes it's all three of the above. And with that being said, thank you for watching our video. I hope it's not only been educational, but entertaining. And my blessings to you all. Thank you. Sponsored by Troy Galloway and Galloway Building Services. GallowayBuildingServices.com.